Hello and welcome to Be Always Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Bungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we have Nigerian artist Oduna Yofapahundo tells us about his inspiration and challenges. And young Ugandans are training as special effects makeup artists to work in the film and entertainment industry. Let's get on with the show. And let's begin with the highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. In music, Nigerian Afrobeat star Banabo is set to make history as he becomes the first Nigerian artist to headline a US stadium. That's according to Billboard. As part of his Love Damini World Tour, Banaboy will perform at New York City Field on July the 8th. Another Nigerian star, Ira Star, is making headlines. The Maven recording artist has landed an endorsement deal with cosmetics brand Maybelline. The company announced on social media that the singer is now their new sub-Saharan African region spokesperson. On the big screen, filmmaker Donald Glover has announced that his production company, Gilga, is working on a short film directed by Malia Obama. The eldest daughter of Barack and Michelle Obama impressed Glover when she co-wrote an episode of the acclaimed Prime Video series, Swarm, that is according to reports. <laughs> You still tweeting from that swarm account? Mm -hmm. She is not like everybody else. And now to some art news. Nigerian artist Oduna Yofapuhunda is a self-trained artist who is creating a new style of art using nails to create portraits of people. Odunayo, who has created the artwork of the Prime Minister of Antigua, uses thousands of nails for each piece, taking months to complete a single project. Red Carpet caught up with him at his studio in Oshun State, where he tells us about his inspiration and his challenges in creating his art. Let's check it out. My name is um, Odunayo Joseph Fakunda. I'm from Oshun State, Elisha West, but I'm currently based in Ondo State, Akure. I'm a nail artist. I use um, nails to make portraits, um, nails and armor to make portraits of different kinds, either human or abstract pictures. I discovered nail art, that was 2015. What really inspired me was seeing that kind of stuff for the first time. Uh, then I personally took interest, then I dedicated my time and energy to learn it for a period of five years. Starting from 2020, I based all my time and energy on producing nail art. What um, inspired me about um, this kind of um, art piece is um, the uniqueness, the style, and so many things are, are, are involved in terms of how you produce it. It is with a lot of patience, Apart from um, the materials and the energy and everything that has to that has to come together before you can be able to produce something, one of the most important thing about the art is the way the techniques, the techniques, and you know the techniques. This with having having a lot of patience before you can arrive at something. Without being patient and dedicated, interested in it, it will be very very difficult to achieve so, such such uh, an art. Uh, we use HDF board, we use um, three-quarter nails, um, uh, we treat the nails with chemicals. When it comes to um, days used in completing a project, it actually depends on the kind of project or um, work or commissioned work we're about to do. Sometimes it takes three weeks to um, four weeks, five weeks, like approximately two months and three months like that, depending on the kind of project. This is 2 d head knots made with over 35,000 nails. This is, um, this is Don Jazzy made with over 15,000 nails. And this is a commission project uh, from someone. Uh, we used over 35,000 nails for this uh, couple's um, work. This is also an abstract, um, over 2,000 nails was used. This is a commercial project of over 35,000 nails used. And there are some other works, other um, works we've not started. 
um, commissioned. These are the sketches. Yeah, we've made over 40 um, artworks so far since we started uh, in the year 2020. We've made for the Prime Minister of um, Atingua and uh, Babuda. We've made for um, Pastor Oedipo, for um, Cute Abiola, a popular comedian, Macaroni. We've made for individuals, different um, calibers of people um, in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. We face um, some challenges why why um, working in terms of um, getting injured um, while we are working we can mistakenly um, injure ourselves sometimes uh, we have um, problems of um, limited um, resources or uh, uh, materials um, towards achieving our goals and then um, the acceptability um, in the um, country as of now based on the fact that the art is new it's still something we are um, trying to work our way around. Uh, it's not really um, 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 accepted by everybody because of the price, how or what it takes to, to, to get this kind of piece for yourself. Um, it's kind of expensive because the materials we use are all expensive. We are currently working on, on some projects, some are commissioned and some are personal projects. And one of the projects that stand out is an African woman that has to play um, deaf and dumb and close out to all um, obstacles and challenges and circumstances around her towards um, achieving her uh, uh, future goals and, and, and play a role of being um, um, resilient and patient and vulnerable to everything that comes at her. And we have more film news. Young Ugandans are training as special effects makeup artists to work in the film and entertainment industry. They hope foreign film producers shooting on the continent will stop bringing their crews with them and start hiring local talent. Check it out. Like a painter with a blank canvas, Esther Nakaziba studies her model before embarking on a long shape-shifting process. Using a bandage and her numerous tools, she transforms this model's face into a realistic one-eyed man who has suffered a burn. She taught herself this skill and she says more young Ugandans are entering the industry to face skyrocketing demand from the film and entertainment industry. Nakaziba is the organizer of a makeup artistry fair to bring all the talents together. We are very few in the country. So we hardly know each other. So with this space, with this exhibition, it is collecting all of us to be in one space so that we can connect, skill those that want to be skilled, train the youth so that we can build a very big team. Makeup artists are in demand for music videos and movie sets to create different visual scenarios and alter actors' appearances. Meekness Kakunzira, a local content producer and an actor, is hopeful about the future of makeup artists in the country. I'm glad that we are growing, we are improving. And I believe that people out there that are watching our, our crafts can really tell that there is a big shift in the industry. Workshops are also organized to familiarize people with the film and entertainment industry. The classes are really helping or are going to really help a lot of people. Now, like you see in the acting industry, uh, you don't get jobs all the time. But if you're uh, SFX makeup, it really helps. Like today, you might not be on set as an actor, but you might be on set as a, as a makeup artist, as a, a, a SFX makeup artist. So it's really helping. And for the guys out there, uh, the youth most especially, because we know we are suffering with unemployment in the, in, in the country should really, should really join this. Nakaziba, who has stamped her name in the local movie and music industry as a special effects makeup artist, says the Ugandan government needs to recognize their work, which could help address the high unemployment rate. We are in a country where art is not really recognized to be a serious career, and yet it is. Because personally, it's, it's, it's the only thing I earn a living from. 
So I believe any youth can. But the only way the government can really see us as a serious industry when we have such collaborations. Uganda has seen several blockbuster films like Last King of Scotland shot in the country. But for a long time, the country had no film makeup artists as producers have outsourced the services from other parts of Africa and Hollywood. More films have been coming out and thank God now they're looking for more African special effects makeup artists because before they used to bring guys from the States. If they come to Africa, they just go to South Africa to look for guys there. So now at least they go to Nigeria, they come to Kenya, they come to UG, so at least we've started scattering everywhere. And in sports news, when 66-year-old Flora Boloi started suffering from severe arthritis, she took up soccer. And now she is participating in South Africa's Grannies International Football Tournament, featuring teams from as far away as France and the United States. South Africa's Grannies are showing that you don't need to be young to play soccer, let alone smash the ball into the roof of the net to the cheers of a delighted crowd. This is the Granny's International Football Tournament, featuring teams from as far away as France and the United States. It's nicknamed the Granny Soccer World Cup. All the players are women aged 55 and up. It's been organized for the first time by South African team Vakegula Vakegula. At this age, at my age, I think if I was not in this uh, uh, spot, I should have been confined in a wheelchair. Flora Baloy is a striker for the team. The 66-year-old started playing in 2017 after suffering from severe arthritis. I feel good when I strike. And when I strike, even my inner emotion, I strike. I strike physical and inside me. So a lot of toxins come out of me when I am striking. When she's not scoring goals, Baloy spends her time reading with her five grandsons or watching soccer with her husband. And she says she now no longer needs medication. The four-day tournament, taking place in Limpopo province, features 15 teams from South Africa and other countries, including Zambia, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Mo Kelly plays for the team from the US, who triumphed 3-2 over Vakegula Vakegula on Sunday. We love it. It means so much to us. It's a community makes us healthy, and we know that they want the same thing. Bakegula means grandmothers in the Tsonga language. The team was formed in 2007 to improve the health of local women. It's since led to the creation of other such teams across the country, as South Africa's grannies kick out stereotypes and show you're never too old for a kickabout. Thank you so much for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Do not forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.